everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Dog Training 101. Today we're going to be working on a specific problem that's not only unique to the 4th of July, but also New Year's. What 4th of July and New Year's both have in common is the fact that there are a lot of fireworks going off. In fact, most people don't realize the two most populated days of the year at the shelter are July 5th and New Year's Day. And when I say populated, I don't mean people going out looking to adopt a dog. I mean people looking for their dog that ran away the night before. Fireworks can be a major fear factor for dogs that are scared of them. So today I'll be going through a few of my favorite ways to manage and hopefully get rid of the fear of fireworks forever. Now the first thing you want to evaluate is the level of your dog's anxiety. And we typically put this on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being very mild and 10 being extremely high. If your dog has a level 9 or 10 anxiety, I would highly suggest you not go out on the 4th of July or New Year's. And the reason why is because your dog could potentially hurt themselves. I have physically seen dogs literally hurl themselves out of windows because they were so scared of the fireworks. If you can't stay home that night, get someone to watch your animal. Safety comes first. Now Jesse here, I already know her level of anxiety. It's around a four or a five. Now of course my goal is to get rid of her anxiety altogether, but most likely, especially doing one or two sessions with her, I'm only gonna lower her anxiety from a five to a four or get rid of her anxiety with fireworks altogether. Let's get started. Okay, so step one in the process, products. Products are always a good way to help manage and lower the anxiety a dog has over loud pops and bangs, in this case, fireworks. Most people try using one product at a time, and if it fails, they move on and try a new product. I do what's called the layered system. And when I say layered, what I do is I layer the products on top of each other until I find the formula that works. In this case, I'm gonna be using a few key products that I find to be very successful. Product number one, compression shirts. These are actually a great way to help lower your dog's anxiety. Now, disclaimer, not all compression shirts work 100% of the time. I do find them to be effective on a good percentage of dogs, but the only way to find out if it's effective on your dog is to buy one and see if it works. Again, your main goal is to get rid of the anxiety altogether. However, if you can reduce it by 10 to 15%, you've made progress. At that point, you layer another product on top of that. Product number two. CBD. 10 years ago, the acronym CBD was frowned upon. People looked at it as a controversial product. Nowadays, CBD has proven to be an effective method to combat anxiety, especially with fireworks and thunder. As you can see here, I have two different styles in my hands. I have the CBD treats and I have the CBD oils. They're both effective. It depends on what your dog likes. I'm gonna go ahead and give her one because she is begging for one. But I find CBD to be the most effective if you give it to them a few days before. You don't want to give it to them on 4th of July because it takes a few days to marinate into their body. Product number three, music. One of the easiest ways to prevent the dog from hearing the fireworks is drown out the sound of them. Now, you'll never fully drown out the sound of the fireworks because they are popping pretty loud out there. But if you can play music to override that sound of the pop, it actually lowers the impact of the pop and hopefully that helps lower their anxiety. I have speakers all throughout my house and so on 4th of July and New Year's, I just crank the music and it drowns out the sound of the fireworks. So the three options I just gave you are very traditional methods to help lower and reduce anxiety when it comes to fireworks. But again, I like to layer them on top of each other. I don't just do one, I put all three together and I find it to be much, much higher success rate. But I do have one more method that I've been working on for the past few years that I find to be very successful. Let's get in the barn. I got something to show you. Okay, the technique I'm going to show you guys today is a technique I've been working on for several years now and I find it to be very successful with a lot of dogs with anxiety with fireworks. All I'm going to do is use these little things right here. This is a typical bubble wrap you'll find uh, inside packages you have delivered. Uh, most people just throw these away. I always find a use for everything when it comes to dog training. This sound is going to replicate fireworks. And what we're going to do today is a technique known as counter conditioning. Okay, Counter conditioning is an age old technique that dog trainers have been using for centuries now. All counter conditioning is, is your exposure the dog to what they're afraid of most. In this case, Jesse is afraid of fireworks. He's afraid of loud noises, bangs, and pops. This right here replicates the loud noise, the bang, the pop. What I'm gonna do here is pop these over and over and let her know that all she was afraid of in the first place was a little piece of plastic. Seeing is believing when it comes to a dog. If a dog cannot see what they're hearing and they're scared of it, they don't know what it is. So in their mind, it's a big scary ghost. It becomes a monster. If she can see it, smell it, and feel it, now she knows what it is. And now her mind went from that big scary monster 
to a little piece of plastic. This technique is not guaranteed, just like most dog training. Everything is a trial and error process. The only way you'll find out if it works on your dog is give it a try. A few things to point out here. I'm not gonna start at a point blank range. I'm not gonna do this right in front of her. That's gonna scare her too much. I'm gonna back up 15 feet, pop it from 15 feet away because that does two things. Number one, it's not as loud. And number two, if it's right in front of her, it creates sort of a shock wave. When it's far away, it, it, it diminishes that shock wave. Your goal here is to give the dog something to associate the loud noise with. Thunder and fireworks, technically, they have no face. They have no visual to the dog. This does. So when I pop it, I'm gonna show the dog this is all you are afraid of. Once she gets used to it, that's how the counter conditioning process works. If you don't have these at home, you can always use Ziploc bags. It makes the exact same sound. So all I'm gonna do here is stand about 15 feet away and pop and see her reaction. It's okay, good, good, good. Now I'm just gonna walk up to her, come here, it's okay. It's okay, look it, look it, that's all it is. You can smell it, there you go, there you go. Good, good! Now she realizes all she was scared of was a little piece of plastic. It's not that scary anymore. When it comes to fireworks and thunder, dogs cannot see that, they hear it. They don't know what to be afraid of. I just showed her this is all she's afraid of. I'm gonna repeat the process over and over and get her over this. This is a technique known as counter conditioning. Jess. There you go, good. And again, walk up to her, Jess. Good, let her smell it. It's all that, good, look at that. That's all it is, that's all it is, good. And rinse and repeat. Good girl, Jessie. Talk her through it, let her know it's not scary. This is all it is. It's okay, good, good, there you go. What's this? What's this? Look at, here, I'm gonna put it right there for you. That's all it is. That's all it is. Look at that. Good, nice, beautiful, perfect. Look at that, it's just plastic. I know, good. So again, I'm about 15 feet away. Now what I'm gonna start doing is moving in just a little closer and repeat the process. The reason we start from far away is so the pop is not too scary for her. It's still far away, it doesn't have that impact in the bass and the thud. As she gets more used to the process, I'm just gonna move in closer and closer each time. So once again, I'm gonna pop it. There you go, good, it's okay. Show it to her. Good. Good, that's all it is. Perfect. Good, nice, beautiful. Beautiful, I know. Same thing. And good, it's okay. It's okay, Jess, good, good. There you go, look at that, look at that. Good, it's okay, there you go. There you go, good girl. So once again, I see I'm making progress. Just move one foot closer, same process. Pop that, good, it's okay, good. Show it to her, there you go, good girl. There you go, it's okay, there you go, good. The fact that she's eating, it proves she's not as nervous. If dogs don't eat, they probably are too nervous. Good girl. And this might not be the technique for them. There you go, look at that, oh yeah. Much better, much better. Good, same thing, same thing. It's okay, oh look at that, much better. Good, good, much better. As you can see, she's still gonna flinch a little bit, she's not running away. There you go, look at that, beautiful, perfect. Good, and again, I'm gonna let her smell it, look at it, taste it, touch it, the whole nine. It's not scary, it's not scary. Once they visualize it, they can see it's not as big of a ghost as they once thought it was. And, oh my gosh, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening? There you go, oh, look at that, beautiful. There you go, sniff it, touch it. Look at it, there you go, there you go. And two more, and oh, look at that, beautiful, beautiful, perfect, good. One more. Oh, look at that, beautiful. That was the last one too, good. So that does it for this episode of Dog Training 101. Again, just to recap, I like the layered approach when it comes to products. As you can see, I've got the compression shirt, I use a CBD, and I play the music to drown out the sound of the fireworks. And second, what I did in the barn here was counter conditioning. I got the dog used to the sound of the pops and let her visualize it, let her smell it, let her see it. Let her know that it's not a scary ghost, it's not a monster, it was just a piece of plastic. Just like most dog training, it's all a trial and error process. Only way to find out if it works on your dog is give it a try. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share. I'm Brandon McMillan, thanks for watching.